Hey, hearty welcome to my channel, Kunjapan Sebastian. Today, our topic is Alzheimer's disease diagnosis. Alzheimer's disease is named after Dr. Alois Alzheimer in the year 1906. The credit for first diagnosing the disease goes to Dr. Alzheimer, who observed on postmortem changes in brain tissues of a patient who was having memory loss, communication problems, and unpredictable behavior. Before proceeding further, it shall be highly appreciated for subscribing to my channel free. At present, doctors are able to diagnose AD in patients with certainty instead of the earlier practice of resorting to postmortem and examination of the brain tissues. If the patient himself is aware that he is having AD and able to tell the doctor the symptoms, diagnosis will become easier. The AD patient may be reluctant to accept that he is having the disease. Therefore, it is advisable that a close friend or family member who knows that the person is having AD to accompany him and explain the symptoms to the doctor to facilitate diagnosis. As a part of the process of diagnosis, doctor may ask several questions to assess the progression of the disease. Brain imaging is an important test to diagnose AD. Brain imaging is done by scanning the brain by employing magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, computerized tomography, CT, or positron emission tomography, PET. The latest development in the diagnosis of AD is a blood test named the PTAU-217 developed by Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis. This test makes it possible to diagnose patients with symptoms of AD. An added advantage of the test is that it is able to diagnose beforehand the occurrence of AD in future even in people the symptoms have not yet developed. The test is said to be accurate, less invasive and as good as FDA approved cerebrospinal fluid test. Unfortunately, the PTAU 217 test is presently available for research purposes only. Further, for conducting this test, ultra-sensitive and costly analytical equipment and tools are required, which are not presently available in clinical laboratories. The test be optimistic that in near future, we shall be able to have access to this test. Hope you find this presentation useful to you. If so, kindly like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Bye till we meet again with another episode.